Let me quickly run through the format of the session tonight. I will give a quick overview of the benefits of Scottish apprenticeships. We will then be moving into a panel discussion on the benefits of apprenticeships in school and post-school. There will then be a question and answer session with attendees and panel members. And then I will share some useful resources and where you can find out more information on what we've discussed this evening. And then we will then close the session. Before I begin, I would like to introduce you to some of our panel members who are in the call tonight. Joy Blackburn, who is an early careers engagement specialist for Balfour Beatty, working with schools, colleges, universities and charities, making sure that Balfour Beatty can offer opportunities to people that need them. Bethany Welsh is a social impact coordinator with Balfour Beatty and Bethany recently completed a modern apprenticeship and has now progressed to a graduate apprenticeship in civil engineering. Pam, D Pam Davey is a deputy head teacher at Kirkintillic High School. Pam has been integral to, to developing the school's foundation apprenticeship offer and also supported other regions in terms of sharing good practice and the delivery of work-based learning in the school curriculum. Eileen Paxton is the head teacher at Bathgate Academy, who was previously at Inveralmond High School and also supported other regions through sharing good practice and work-based learning delivery and continues this in her role today. And Gautam Suresh is a software engineering graduate apprentice with BBC Scotland. Gautam um, undertook a software development foundation apprenticeship when he was at school in fifth year and he's progressed to the graduate apprenticeship with BBC Scotland. He also turned down some university offers because he was really keen on earning while you learn. So in Scotland, there are three types of apprenticeships available, foundation, modern and graduate apprenticeships. And in this session, we will discuss these in a bit more detail and how work-based learning can open the door to a wide range of careers. Today, you can find apprenticeships in more industry sectors than ever before, and they're all based on the skills that employers want so that they're relevant. There are currently over 43,000 people in apprenticeships and work-based learning opportunities in Scotland. So if we start with the key features of foundation apprenticeships, so these are for senior phase school pupils in full-time education. And foundation apprentices will gain skills employers need. They'll learn about their chosen industry and they'll achieve a work-based learning qualification. The foundation apprenticeship can be chosen as a school subject either over one or two years. Foundation apprenticeships are currently available in subjects that support key growth areas, including engineering, IT, scientific technologies and social services and healthcare. The apprentices develop meta skills such as communication, team working and problem solving and completion of the FA leads to a nationally recognised qualification at the SCQF level six. SES are also piloting some SEQF Level 4 and Level 5 foundation apprenticeships in automotive construction and hospitality in some local authority areas. Foundation apprenticeship can help with progression into a modern or a graduate apprenticeship also. And the foundation apprenticeship at SEQF Level 6 is at the same level as a Scottish higher and it's recognised by all colleges and universities in Scotland for entry into further and higher education courses. Modern and graduate apprenticeships are similar in that they are both employed status work-based learning programmes. They allow people to work, earn and learn while being directly employed by an organisation. Anyone who has reached or is about to reach the statutory school leaving age in Scotland can apply to become a modern or graduate apprentice and they're also open to new and existing employees. Any employer in Scotland seeking to widen their talent pool and address skills gaps can also recruit modern or graduate apprentices. Apprentices spend most of their time learning in the workplace, although some may undertake formal learning off the job, which is often supported by a learning provider such as a college. And again, apprentices on modern and graduate apprenticeships will also develop meta skills, which are sought, sought by employers. There are over 100 different types of modern apprenticeships, which range from SCQF level 5 right up to level 12 across a wide range of industries. And depending on the subject, the apprenticeship can take up to four years to complete. Graduate apprenticeships are a way for individuals to achieve an ordinary or a master's degree. And they're offered in key sectors that need highly skilled employees with qualifications at SEQF levels 9 to 11. And again, depending on the subject area, the apprenticeship can take between two to five years to complete. Now, what I want you to do is to go into the benefits in terms of individuals um, within each of the programmes. So the main benefits for foundation apprentices receive are getting that knowledge, skills and experience, 
gaining an industry recognised qualification, which can also support progression into a modern or a graduate apprenticeship. Having a foundation apprenticeship qualification can also enhance a young person's CV and job application. And as I mentioned previously, it's recognised by all colleges and universities as an SQA hire. And more importantly, I think is around about that meta skills development for young people, helping them build their confidence, eh, creativity, problem solving, communication, etc. SDS carries out surveys every year in terms of modern apprentices, and these are some of the main reasons why individuals have said that they actually started a modern apprenticeship as part of their career journey. So getting training that is designed by industry for industry, choosing over 100 different frameworks that are available, learning in a real environment and earning a wage and gaining experience that supports their future career, whether it's, you know, experience and skills on their CV or other job applications. And in terms of a graduate apprenticeship, there's many benefits for individuals. It's about getting qualified, working towards a diploma, an honours and a master's professional qualification. Gaining skills such as transferable skills that are recognised by, by industry, by employers and also by universities. Earning, so you're in paid employment, you're gaining a degree, learning is funded so there's no cost to the apprentice and they avoid student debt. It's industry designed so you can be confident that what you learn is relevant and right for your role. And it's available in a wide range of growth industries that offer strong career prospects for the future. We're now going to move into a panel discussion. Hi there. So the first kind of topic we want to explore with yourselves is work-based learning in the curriculum. So Pam, I've got a question for yourself. Um, can you tell me why work-based learning is important in your school curriculum and how you embedded foundation apprenticeships? Hi, good afternoon. Um, well, it's actually been, been quite a long journey. Um, since 2017-18, um, we have been, we've embedded two frameworks in school um, and have currently 59 young people undertaking foundation apprenticeships. Um, it's a model that's taken time to grow and really the, the biggest the biggest benefit is the trust and the addition of new colleagues that I've met along the way um, from a, a training provider called Tigers who deliver um, alongside us. Um, we deliver business skills um, in school and also social services, children and young people. Um, we also send young people out to college, um, to the Glasgow Regional Colleges. So we have a mixture um, of young people who can access over 10 frameworks, um, either as a one year or a two year model. Um, we certainly we certainly um, have embedded it um, systematically at first year the numbers were smaller um, and over time word of mouth has spread and and the popularity and the benefits have absolutely really really sold themselves um, and and the young people do thoroughly enjoy and have a great relationship with both the school and the training providers making it a really successful partnership Thanks, Pam, and it's great to see such an excellent spread of provision within your school as well. Fantastic. Eileen, a question for yourself. What has been your experience in developing a work-based learning curriculum offer? Hi, thanks, Alison. Hey, sorry, Helen. Um, similar, similar to Pam, we started out early, do early doors working with the college and then gradually embedded it into our school curriculum with initially the business skills framework. Um, where we took that framework and looked at what our children wanted to learn and matched it in with sports in my, in my previous school. We then brought on board the health and social care framework and the scientific technologies framework. So that was gradual, which involved staff in the school learning the National Progression Award element, working in partnership with the local college and local businesses and growing that over time and building up capacity, um, which a big, a big kind of connection to that was seeing that there was a, a gap in our curriculum that we wanted to address and with the early stages being entirely through the college it just enhanced the partnership working um, as we move through the process of embedding those three frameworks. Um, I'm now in a new school and, and starting that process again but certainly the impact from the past gives it the, the momentum to continue with that journey with it being in a co-creation with schools. Fantastic, Eileen. So again, I mean, we've all gone talk about partnerships and collaboration, but very important to the development and also that context with other subjects as well, which is important. Gautam, I'm now going to um, bring yourself in. I've got a question for you. 
round about what was the benefit to you having an AFE as part of your school curriculum? Yeah, no, the, the benefit was it was immense because I would go to college um, and kind of learn all uh, the technology that were more aligned to what was actually happening in the industry, but also it benefited the subject that I was doing at school. So I would have really, you know, thoughtful discussions with my lecturer at college and I could just bring that over to my computing science teacher at school. So it, it, it almost enhanced my learning a bit more than just the curriculum content, but actually having thoughtful, engaging discussions with the actual lecturers and teachers themselves. Fantastic. So we can see how it's correlating with your other subjects. That's great. Now going to move on to another another topic, which is about driving awareness of apprenticeships overall. So Pam, back to yourself. What happens in your school to raise awareness of apprenticeships? What's your kind of process? Certainly. Um, well, well, every year, obviously, at this time of year, we're going through um, surveys of young people and looking at their careers, looking at where they want to go, both in the short term and long term. Um, we're looking um, at delivering presentations by both our SDS colleagues, um, the Foundation Apprenticeships team and our partners Tigers in classrooms and PSE classrooms. Um, we Every year when we put our option choices out, we have a whole column that has school based options plus Foundation Apprenticeships delivered in school. And it's the same column that um, the young people can access at college. So in terms of the, the boring side, the, the practical, um, I'm sure any school that delivers foundation apprenticeships, you'll have your college afternoons. Um, we swap RE, PSE, which are core subjects in the senior phase um, in fifth and sixth year. And we block that against um, a double period. So essentially creating a triple period on a Tuesday, triple period on a Thursday afternoon. Um, so that's certainly the nuts and bolts I can see from some of the questions that come up in the chat about timetabling. Um, we write letters to parents. Um, we have the support from our guidance staff. Um, when they're, they're coursing young people, they have a good understanding of the expectations. It's certainly not an easy option, um, although it doesn't have a, an exam-based element to it. Um, that, that you know, that, that you have to look at the other young that the young people's other subjects and abilities to be able to make sure they can cope with a level level six qualification. Um, and you really need to get the buy-in of all all parties. Um, and it, that does take time. It, it takes a while and we now have a real trusting relationship it's like that our, our partners come into school on a tuesday thursday afternoon deliver in our classrooms they have a dedicated classroom for each framework and um, they have it resources and um that's very much our tigers classrooms um on a tuesday and a thursday afternoon so so that awareness is quite obvious because because the you know, it's just like picking another subject in school um, and the, our partners, Tigers, come to parents' nights, they, they report alongside us um, and, as I say, they come to us when there's any problems. So we've got, I can see the chat, it's asking about how many young people. We've got full classes. We've got currently 20-ish um, in our social services and we've got 16 in business in fifth year. We also have some six years who come back and crash, plus another eight who go out to college and do a level four construction foundation apprenticeship. Fantastic, Pam. So there's there's obviously a couple there's of key lot. things there that you've 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 absolutely nailed in terms of you know get the timetable and be creative, get it in the options, you know build the trust with the partners. All fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Eileen. I'm going to pose the same question to yourself then in terms of how you raise awareness within the the school about apprenticeships. Yep, I think really mirroring what what Pam said, it's it's something we take the opportunity to raise any chance we get. So any parent information session, in, in, there's a question about parity, you know, it's it's a valid option as is everything else. If it's about um, raising awareness of, of what the whole Foundation Apprenticeship family is, where it sits within a pathway, staff knowing that, young people knowing it, um, parents knowing about it, knowing that the option exists, um, knowing we, how, what, why it would make sense to choose it and really just upscaling people and not ruling it out because you don't know what it is. Um, something we do certainly with our pathways planning with the members of staff who have those conversations with the young people, they will complete the online e-learning module, which is covers the whole apprenticeship family, similar to the presentation at the start, Helen, around you know how they all feed in each other, what impact they have, how they're viewed in society. We do a lot of inputs year on year, month on month with young people about not not considering it. So we have conversations about university. It's like why not this? Do you understand it? And having the conversations at teacher level. And I think it's taken every chance we can through partnership events, business link events, really um, 
making sure it's not the thing you talk about once you spoke about everything else. It's part and parcel of that that learner planning um, for the young people and where, where information sought out on it, we'll provide it. But similarly, we're, we're really kind of broadcasting it as far as possible, any chance we get. Fantastic. No, absolutely right, Eileen. That's great. Thanks very much for that. Bethany, I'm going to bring you in now um, in terms of when you were at school, how did you hear about apprenticeships? So I actually finished school back in 2014. So foundation apprenticeships were kind of very, very early stages, if not didn't exist. Um, I didn't do a foundation apprenticeship at school. Um, however, I knew from probably a younger age I didn't want to go to university straight away I would have been 17 and um, when I left at the end of sixth year and I did stay to the end of sixth year so going to university to me was not going to be about that party life I wasn't going to be 18 till the following year so I would have had a full year of um, probably sitting in uh, student accommodation while all my friends were out but that wasn't a big thing to me either and um, my parents were very supportive and um, my father was in the RAF at the time and then offshore and my mother was a, an accountant so um, they didn't go to um, my dad didn't go to university neither did my mum um, so they didn't really mind what I wanted to do it was more uh, their support on what I wanted to do um, speaking to teachers as well um, I mean I loved school my favourite subject was maths um, and technical so um, it was um, I've just seen a question in there for people who are not clever enough to go to university well apprenticeships are 100% not that because it's actually um, it's quite a balance it's quite difficult for being an apprentice because you have got to balance your work and studying Um, it's very difficult Um, and I think that was a big part of it it was coming from teachers who knew what I wanted to do it was actually my technical teacher at the time was like well have you explored these options so having the buy-in from not just your guidance tutors and people who are really pushing it um, careers advisors they came in and we did a meeting with them and you do all that so when we had the CITB and things like that so it's just kind of all working together on sharing to the pupils and the teachers um, as well but also the parents play a big big part and I think that's where I was fully supported and um, my parents knew what I wanted to do and then they had the support from the school themselves um, mm -hmm. and yeah that's probably Fantastic, Bethany, and you're right, you know, parents are a key influencer, but I think the key message from yourself there is about having that right information to make your individual informed choice. And I suppose that's where careers advisor advice and guidance comes in as well. So fantastic. Gautam, I'm going to pose the same question to yourself then in terms of how you heard about apprenticeships in school. Yep. So I think it was oh God, 2018. Um, that was when I was in fifth year. And so a person uh, kind of or even fourth year, actually, a person um, came out and kind of gave a presentation on apprenticeships, foundation, modern graduate. And at that point, it, it kind of I was so opposite to Bethany. I actually I really wanted to go to uni and it was traditional uni. I just wanted to get my degree. But I kind of, you know, looked at the slides. I was like, wait, this actually makes a lot of sense, you know, um, working and 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 or at the time of foundation apprenticeship, actually getting you know college experience at the same time of, of um, doing my school subjects, and so um, that was basically the information I got. A leaflet spoke to my PSHE teacher at the time, and again it was like they gave their opinion, but also gave me the resources to make my own informed opinion about it. So links to websites and and other. And my parents were you know they they completely trusted me in the school, so you know it wasn't hard from my perspective to get buy in. It was more about just making the the right choice for me, and I knew eventually I wanted to go into a graduate apprenticeship because of that that was the opportunity for university. Fantastic. So again, we've heard two very different scenarios in terms of pathways, but what's most important is about getting that resource, getting that right information for you to make informed decisions. So thank you very much for that. I'm now moving on to talk about create a pa creating partnerships, and we've heard a wee bit about that already. But Eileen, in terms of yourself, can you tell us what partnerships you've created to support apprenticeships in your school and how important they are? Yeah. I think I think the the ongoing development of partnerships for us, the, certainly the the start process for the apprenticeships is very much about those work placements in terms of what offer can can we get from employers that marry up to what they need. So that mutual um, relationship of the two way street, but also the experience of the learners, which is very different than maybe work placements in the past or work shadowing. It's about those competencies. So that shifted some of the conversations that, that we previously had. We were looking at 
you know, how do we engage, how do we collaborate? This was very much about influencing the curriculum together. So I think the approach there was really just about uh, really developing an honest relationship about what we we're looking for, working with college partners, working with local authority, working together about this is the expectation because it is different with foundation apprenticeships. You're, you're not wanting a, a week long work experience, you're wanting young people to be really challenged and experience work based learning in a way that they show they can do it. Um, and I think that's been established over time. I think the relationship um, becomes stronger when you have young people on placement and you have that positive working relationship with yourselves with them. Um, they become the adults in the scenario as well. And I think that is just something that year on year gets stronger and stronger. One area I would say that um, my, my current school is very strong in is the, the capitalising of our young people who leave us, who then come back. We've had a um, meeting the professionals event just in school today. We over 30 professionals in of which 50% are previous Bath Academy pupils so things like that in terms of right, you're leaving to do various different steps in your journey but eventually you'll be somewhere where you can then contribute back and I think that is a really big asset particularly within a community like this that can continue to grow and nurture and then they're they're giving back to their own families or their own community so those kind of things I think is just about investing the time and being really transparent about your expectation um, and it being a two-way street because there's it's mutually beneficial. Absolutely, and there's nothing more powerful than peer-to-peer -peer, um, kind of support and awareness. No, I absolutely agree with you there, Eileen. Pam, have you got anything else to add from your perspective around that? Really, really very similar to Eileen um, in terms in terms of and, and you're mentioning a peer to peer because really over the last four or five years when we've been delivering and the, the offer has been enhanced over time, it's been the pupils telling other pupils that this is a good option. Um, we can see from young people and I can see questions about, about university access. Um, We've got a vast range. We've got young people who've got four hires. They do five, four hires and get four A's and a foundation apprenticeship in their fifth year. And when they make an application to university, the offers are now coming back. UCAS has been, and the university have been much more transparent about what their offer is in terms of conditions. I had a boy the other day come back and it's saying geography, Glasgow University, um, two A's at higher or an A plus has been complete as foundation apprenticeship. So the, it's, it's a much more transparent process. The validity and the parity of esteem is, is starting to become embedded. Um, there's a really good, I think, the online tool, and, and I often have the, 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 the diagram of, of um, foundation of friendship to degree framework in my hand and I use it when I'm contacting universities and say you've not mentioned that foundation of friendship and the conditions and then they'll write back and they'll they'll confirm yes sorry we missed that so and it's also there for young people who are potentially aiming for one higher uh, by the end of S6 so it's not just you know there's no real um, barrier as long as the literacy level is there and the work ethics there and the readiness to go and work placement is is there so I, I can I can only say I, I mean just even answering that question about cover teachers no I, if we send young people to college we, we wouldn't have a cover teacher or teacher with the young people we don't have a cover teacher in the class there is a phone in every room just like you would have for a teacher and um, we liaise with support for learning we liaise with guidance and if there's any issues they let us know and we contact home so it, it, I don't you don't need it it's not an added um burden to have to put a cover teacher in the class fantastic thanks for that Pam and and also for clearly articulating that round about the UCAS and all the positive news stories that we're getting yeah you're absolutely right Joy I'm going to bring yourself in now um from an employer perspective and um, so how important is working with schools to drive the awareness of apprenticeships for yourself and what support do you offer to schools? Um, it, it's massively important for us as a business. I think it'd be incredibly arrogant of us to think that young people just want to get an apprenticeship and are going to go, oh, I'm going to join you. Um, uh, there's still a lot of young people out there that don't know about the opportunities that are available to them and that's where we rely on schools to share um, and partner with them um, for us to go and talk about our business. I mean our business in, is incredibly complex and a lot of young people assume it's just construction and don't think they could do an apprenticeship in IT or other things and I think that's that's one of the things where you have to partner and let the young people know you're, you're brainy enough to go to university but actually would a graduate apprenticeship fit you better because you learn in a different way to other people? So um, it, it's partnering with the schools, letting the schools see what we can offer um, and giving the support to the teachers. So it's not just 
this is the theory that they're learning. There's also the practical application of what they're learning and what they could use it for in a future career. Fantastic. And I think you're, you're, you're spot on there about, you know, don't just think of us as a construction company. Yeah. It's about, as I mentioned, there's over 100 frameworks in modern apprentices. So there's a breadth out there as well. So that's a really good point to highlight. Thanks for that, Joy. Really. Going to move into the benefits of apprenticeship section. I'm going to come back to yourself, Joy, actually. That's fine. <laughs> so why does Balfour B invest so heavily in the apprenticeship programmes? I think because you can see with apprentices coming into the business, they're bringing new ideas. Young people ha see the world a completely different way to someone who's in their 40s or 50s. They've got new um, new ways of thinking about doing things. And by doing an apprenticeship, you're learning the basics and you're learning the theory at the same time and you're embedding all the knowledge that you're learning on a, on, um, in college maybe one day a week on your day, in your day-to-day -day job as well. So it's not a case of going to university, learning something and then three, four years later, you're, you're starting a new job and everything's brand new and it's how do I apply this knowledge? It's mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis, everything you're learning. And so we have apprentices who are now very, very senior leaders in the business because they've learned they've learned it from the bottom and then really developed their their experience and their skills and um, and then they go on and they go on to mentor and and take on more apprentices and yeah so we yeah, <laughs> yeah. so so as basically to support your business nurture Massively. individuals to to progress through a career. Yeah. Is, yeah. is what we're seeing here as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And we we use our apprentices to go back into, um, like um, 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 Mrs. Davy and Eileen were saying about um, going back into their old schools or schools in the area and saying, look, this is me. I, um, I went to this school. I've done an apprenticeship. And they don't want to hear from someone who's older and looks like their mum. They want to hear from someone who's maybe just a few years older and they can go, OK, that person looks like me. Yeah, I can do that if they can do that. So they're the best exactly. role models for yeah. us. Just like Gaudam and Bethany. Yeah, exactly. exactly like that. Yep, absolutely. So, Bethany, I'm going to um, come to yourself now in terms of what's been the main benefit to you undertaking an apprenticeship pathway in your career? I think you just become a totally trusted, embedded, experienced member in a team. Um, you kind of grow with the company and you sort of learn from the start. You start learning their processes and procedures. So as Joy says, like when you become your fourth or fifth year apprentice, you're actually starting to, even in third year apprentice, you're starting to take on the first year apprentices and sort of take them through and mentor them. Um, so that's sort of a big um, part of it but also the progression so doing an apprenticeship you get the same qualification at the end of your five years as someone who's gone five years at uni but with five years experience um, and since then personally I've been able to expand my career and go into a different career so I started off as a civil engineer that's what I did my apprenticeship in was on site based on site um, I did um, pre-construction at the kind of tail end of my apprenticeship learning um, pre-construction tendering and now I'm in social impact which is completely different role um, but I've learned the business right from the start right from being an apprentice right the way through so that's been a huge huge benefit for myself. Fantastic so not only you develop your technical skills in terms of the job roles but also those meta skills that are key for employers as well so that's fantastic Bethany. Gaudam I'm going to bring you in with the same question in terms of what the main benefits have been for you yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's hard to not mirror what Bethany said, you know, aside from all the technical skills of actually working, you know, here at the BBC, there's so many talented people here, right? And it's obviously a big corporation, there's so much going on. But honestly, I think the main thing is, I was always a bit, you know, I was socially confident before, but being professionally confident is something else entirely. I've been able to gain the confidence to network with people, reach out, take the initiative. And that's something that doesn't, you just, you know, don't you don't get the same opportunity, uh, same opportunities in school, right? You're, you're 17, 16, you're not expected to be professionally confident, but with the FA, the MA, the GA, um, th that, that can happen. And you really get this leg up. Um, I always kind of tell um, people that The Apprentice is just a title. You know, the last three years I've been doing the same job as any other software engineer. And it's definitely, I'm definitely recognised for it. So that, that's definitely what I'd say. It's just a title, but you you grow so much. Fantastic. Really good point there, Gaudam. An apprenticeship is a job. And I think that's a key point to get across as well. So thanks for that. Pam, I'm going to come back to yourself in terms of what would you say are the main benefits of apprenticeships from that learner in the school perspective? 
Well, I can, I can see young people blossom. I can see the trust and um, that they have in both their trainers and the school to do the right thing by them. I can see the maturity when they are they are in class and they are um, they're in class and they are. Um, they, sorry, there's someone coming in my room at the moment. <laughs> they are. Uh, sorry, I'm on a call. Sorry. Um, they are. They are on a. Um, let me start again because that really put me off. That's okay. um, when they're in class um, and they're talking to their tutor, they're in first name terms. Uh, when they're out in work placement, they feed back to us just how thrilled they are and what they learned and why they were invited. They were invited to Christmas dinner with their employees. So it's about, again, that professional confidence feeds into their other subjects and their, their progression pathway, where they want to go beyond school. They're much more aware. Young people who are out at college have that knowledge of higher and further education. They know very much what that environment is. It takes the stigma and the scary factor of, of what's next out away from them. Um, we also, from our partners, we have they have they run events and our young people get to have opportunities to have mentorship and um, they go out to events that are run by our partners and equally our partners run in service training in school for our staff so it very much is a two-way street that we're learning from each other um, and I can see from some of the chat is asking about managing work placements um, that the, the foundation apprenticeship um, account holders the people who are actually managing however many foundation apprenticeships in the frameworks they are responsible for organizing the placements but this year we have um liaised with our council and um they have been amazing they have offered to find the placements for our early years um young people who require placements and they've offered easter and summer jobs for those young people as well and um, it also is clear that it saves money for the employer longer term on a purely financial basis i uh, have in a social services um and young people foundation apprenticeship means that you only have to do a one year post um, school as a modern apprentice and um, to get the full modern apprenticeship rather than two years. So there's there's mutual benefits um, for, for for all with the learner for Saturday jobs for for um, post school destinations as well. Absolutely, Pam. You just you you, you stole my thunder there. Um, yeah. So it's all those added benefits as well. Like as you say, they're getting part time jobs out of this. They're getting to see the college or the uh, environment, and they're getting to see the employer environment. They're getting access to other uh, things that employers are putting on. So fantastic. Really, really great. Thanks for that feedback. I'm now going to move on to how a foundation apprenticeship actually works in practice. So Eileen, back to yourself in terms of. What needs to happen in the school to make the FA work? Um, so I think similarly what, what's been said and has been shared across the panel is about valuing it. You know, if, if there is a barrier, I've not made a barrier big enough yet that doesn't make this worthwhile. Um, there are various structures that have maybe come up already. You know, that that column that's allocated for, for college partnership, which is tends to be across most schools, will be a time and for, for us it's a Tuesday, Thursday afternoon. So that is, I suppose, your, your go-to quickest route in, which most schools will have, um, and how that works for being in the, the, the plans for young people. When you start then embedding it into your school, in terms of your, you're doing it within your curriculum, um, that column is also an option, but it can sit anywhere within your, your school week if it's planned around. So from my experience with the three different frameworks is that they were in three different columns that happened within, within the school day. It was time to hold like anything else staff involved were, were, were in that um, structure um, and then the, the work placement and the, the 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 planning around the work placement be it in sick year on a certain day or in a certain afternoon it's just that flexibility of approach about where that makes sense and again that honesty with employers it's not necessarily a full day on a Tuesday it might be a Tuesday Thursday afternoon it might be a all day Friday because it makes sense around around that other uh, the, the children's learning so I think flexibility is key but the the structures are there to make this work even without being super creative it's just I suppose valuing it getting it out there and then the numbers will gradually increase when, when you see the impact it has on young people and the biggest bit I suppose for all the conversations I've had around it is is it right for young people is this a bit of learning that matters and, and the answer I think is quite clearly yes and it's probably something that's maybe been missing for Scottish education for too long and we've now got something to really capitalise on so um, yeah that just making it work by valuing it and people knowing and being creative. Yeah. 
That thanks, Eileen. Yeah, absolutely. Flexibility is a key. I think around a lot of this as well. Gildam, I'm going to bring yourself in. It just could you tell us how your FA actually worked alongside your other subjects in school? Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to think back a little bit. <laughs> but um, in my so in my first year, so I did a two year uh, FA uh, to be clear. In my fifth year, it was I think Tuesday afternoons and and Thursday afternoons. I would actually get transport arranged for me, um, so I didn't have to think about that, right? Which was a, a massive load off of uh, commuting to the to the college. Um, and I went to Glasgow Clyde College for the afternoon. I had my kind of lecture, transport back to school, and then I'm go and then I'm home. So obviously, I was missing time off in you know, school and it ha it was timetabled where actually on Friday I would actually attend the classes in like a different group um, just to make up that right and so there was actually no time being lost because I was actually making it up on, on a different day and so my fifth day was amazing so I would, I would you know, go in the afternoons and then on Fridays actually I would join my other friends in like another computing science class it was great um, in my sixth year there's obviously the workplace assessment so if I, if I believe got this right, it's like a full day Thursday um, that I had, and in my work experience, I would just go and um, go to, I think, Scottish Enterprise. And what was really nice is I would, I would have my commute reimbursed, so the cost from that, I didn't have to worry about because I could just reclaim it. And what was interesting in my sixth year is that, I, of course, I was missing some time off of subjects, but the teachers are amazing, and they would actually upload uh, some of the documents online, and the next day, I'd actually come up to them at break and lunchtime in between their classes and just, you know, gather any notes, anything, uh, any deadlines I've, I've missed. But it was honestly, it wasn't something, you know, where I the, the burden was only on me. It was, you know, myself and the teachers all working together to make sure that it was um, as smooth as possible. So it was, it was great. I loved the answer. Fantastic. So I suppose the key there is the support Gautam that you received as well. Oh yeah, so that, it, that, yeah. yeah it, it's all it's all down to the teachers, right? If the teachers aren't fully invested in it, then how can you expect a student to take all that, right? Fantastic. Thanks, Gautam. Bethany, I'm going to come back to yourself. Can you tell us a bit about how your apprenticeship works for you? Yep. Yeah, so I did a modern apprenticeship, which followed on after I completed sixth year. Um, so I am from up in the north of Scotland, so Inverness was my local college. Um, so I actually studied at the UHI, studied civil engineering and um, Balfour BT was my um, apprenticeship um, company. So I worked across Scotland actually throughout my time. Um, I did a block release course, so there's, there's a couple of options on how to do an apprenticeship. You can do day release um, where you go to college or university for one day a week and then you work the rest of the floor. It kind of depends on um, where you live, where, where and what company you work for. For me, if I was working up in Thursday, I went around three weeks. It worked out about three weeks every three months. Um, so there was like a January, um, a May and then a September. That, it, However, it worked in the um, curriculum. So that's how mine worked. Thanks, Bethany. And I suppose that just back to the point, you know, that the apprenticeships, the frameworks are different, the employers are different as well. So there's a wide variety of opportunity out there. Joy, I'm yeah, going to come back to yourself. Sorry. sorry, Bethany. Joy, I'm going to come I back to yourself. I was just like you're fully oh. supported, like by both the uh, by the college and your employer. So they'll work together to make the best outcome for the learner. Um, and yeah. it, it works that way. Thanks, Bethany. Yep, really key point there. Joy, um, in terms of um, from the employer perspective, what support do apprentices get from yourself? So it, it's important that when our apprentices join us, they don't feel like they're coming in just to do a job and get their qualification. We um, we put them on um, an apprenticeship programme. Um, so they join with a lot of other apprentices around the same kind of geographical location. And so they'll be put into a cohort. And um, as they progress through their apprenticeship, they'll be given certain challenges um, to work together. One of the challenges is known as the Braithay Challenge. So there's a place in the Lake District called Braithay. They go away for, it's around a week. Um, and they work together they learn kind of team building skills and communication skills and all these things so all these meta skills that make them um, better communicators they learn to collaborate and and it's a huge part of I suppose as you grow up and you, you realise that it's all very well doing your own side of things, but actually we all have to work together in some way. Um, so it, it gives it gives extra skills to to the young people. They get support from um, from mentors within the business. Um, certainly, if they go on to do kind of chartered um, qualifications, so whether it's um, ICE or RICS or, or other things, depending on obviously what what they're studying, but they'll be given support to get that chartership. And as Bethany was saying 
they will have either one day a week at college uh, or block release. And um, it just obviously depends on the apprenticeship, but they will always be given that time to do the studying and make sure that they have it. And it's not a case of, right, you're going to be working five days a week and you're going to have to work at the weekends to try and catch up on all, all that. They have to, they get given that time and, and support. And the managers are really, um, really supportive, really, um, they they're bringing in apprentices for a reason and and they recognize them as a very valued um, um, member of the team. I know um, Bethany's mentioned previously um, that sometimes you have apprentices who have been with the business for three years and then you'll bring in a graduate who's newly graduated from university won't have the same amount of experience and you've got the apprentice teaching the graduate so mm -hmm. again that gives them extra skills um where they're they're kind of passing on their knowledge to others and um so yeah they they get a lot of support within the business to develop as a person as well as um, obviously get their qualifications fantastic and and i suppose the reason that why you support them as much is because of how important they are to use yes, business as well absolutely so thanks joy so pam back over at yourself in terms of the support for foundation apprentices when they're in school what kind of support do they get and um, cer certainly young people in classrooms um they, they have support from both their tutor and from the staff round about them obviously when they go on work placement they have just exactly as Gaudium described, um, if they can pick up maths in another column and they're missing periods of maths or geography, we try and look and see where we can infill and create extra periods. Sounds, sounds like that was a good idea. Um, and if we can make that work, some people get extra classes. If we have staff available to do catch up periods, we do. Um, obviously, there is an impact. When, and I had the lucky job of timetabling in my school. So I try and avoid double periods on a Tuesday and a Thursday morning, which I know is really boring, but it avoids that young people in the other columns that their foundation apprenticeships may be not in to to um you know they're not going to hit two doubles for instance and miss um more than four out of the six of their periods um so i try and try and look carefully at the timetable and i think that lays on with the timetable um timetable in the school and planning is is crucial to make sure young people achieve in all their subjects um and i think just again just that constant feedback um i see the tutors every tuesday thursday i go along just say hi see how they're doing um and we work together in anything that's cropped up, if it's attendance issues or communicate home about, about anything that's safeguarding, anything like that, um, we just we communicate. Um, and again, when it comes to like new casts and college applications, it's all over their application. And um, you can get, you know, get an awful lot of meat out of a foundation apprenticeship in terms of what they've done over the skills they've learned in hires. You can talk about the work placement element, the, the maturity, the independence. There's so many um, skills that are that are evident and and can be written about on an application for a job or a or, or a college or university mm -hmm. thanks pam and, and that key point and about you know communication with providers i suppose is vital so that we can identify the support young people need at that point in time yep great i'm now going to move on to the last part of the panel discussion and you know always like to focus on the high part you know give us a high before we we finish the discussion so this is all about achievements so bethany back to yourself what has been your greatest achievement so far on your apprenticeship it's probably quite difficult for me to choose because there's been um a lot of highlights for me um, obviously getting my apprenticeship in the first place was a huge highlight I mean without that I wouldn't be here but I was actually um, nominated for Scottish Apprentice of the Year in 2017 and 2019 with the Skills Development Scotland and I was fortunate enough to win Balfour Beatty's Apprentice of the Year in 2018 and that's with our UK wide company so Scotland, England, Ireland at the time and Wales so that was a huge achievement um, and more recently as well I won a STEM Ambassadors Award for um, outstanding contribution to participation and widening diversity and inclusion in STEM. So that is a massive achievement as well. So I think throughout my whole time um, being an apprentice, I think those ones are probably the biggest ones. Absolutely fantastic achievements, Bethany. I didn't realise that. So that's absolutely fantastic. Gaudem, um, I'm going to ask the same question to yourself. <laughs> yeah, so I guess similar to similar to Bethany, I've been shortlisted as a finalist for 
graduate finalists of the year uh, in Scotland for this year. So looking forward to that. Um, in terms of technical achievements, I've worked on the BBC website. So if you ever load up BBC News, um, you'll get to see the code changes I've made. So it's, you know, from day one, I was doing the job, right? It's I've never thought of myself as different to any other employee. Definitely go, definitely don't get treated any differently. So, you know, my there's been so many highlights, of course. But uh, yeah, definitely those technical achievements and, of course, uh, being recognized for my efforts in outreach and talking about apprenticeships. Fantastic. So you're actually a celebrity Gaudum is what you're telling us here. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of why do you think more people, more parents, carers need to know about apprenticeships? So honestly, one of the... It's so different because a traditional uni, of course, isn't for everyone. I actually had unconditional offers um, for universities in Glasgow and I actually you know, turned them down. It was so important because, you know, you get to right, for a graduate apprenticeship, you get to earn and you get a degree. There's no student debt. I don't I feel like people don't talk about that enough. No student debt. Um, but that, it's it's crazy. Um, but honestly, the, the main reason is, again, these, these meta skills entering the industry when I was 18. Think about it now. I'm going to graduate with four years experience compared to a traditional un university student. You know, they've maybe had an internship somewhere, but that honestly doesn't compare. And of course, at the end of the apprenticeship, I get a full job role. So it's 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 mind boggling to me how amazing and a graduate apprenticeship is and how people don't know about it. And so I hope with this webinar and, and other outreach efforts, we can we can let more people know about it. Fantastic, Gaudam, absolutely. And Bethany, back to yourself then. Why do you think more people, parents, carers need to know about apprenticeships? I think I'd just like to mirror exactly what Gaudam just said. Um, I think without that, yeah, we, we just I think we just need to promote and do as much as we can to get everybody to understand the importance, but also to um, notify that everyone that apprenticeships aren't for everyone as well. So it's a real decision that the young person has to make and, and it's their focus. Yeah. Just to add on, it's also about removing the stigma from like an apprenticeship, right? I feel like that still very much exists. And hopefully with, you know, Bethany and myself uh, becoming, you know, successful in our roles and everything, people can, can see that it's not, you know, we're not going around the office making tea for people. We're <laughs> actually employees. Um, often with more output than you know the new starters right we're mentoring people we have knowledge of the systems and it's it's so fascinating that people kind of put down apprenticeships when and realistically I think Bethany and I have worked even harder than traditional uni students and other employees and um, balancing uh, university study and actual uh, work it's uh, it's mind-boggling I just wanted to add that Absol on. absolutely you're spot on and it is about raising awareness and I mean, the two of you are absolutely excellent role models. You are fantastic, you know, so that's the kind of stories we need to get out there. And that's the purpose of, I suppose, the session uh, this evening as well. So I'd just like to thank all the panellists for their thoughts and their contributions to today's session.